Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Cider Drinker Top 10! Yes, it's finally time to do another Top 10 Ciders list. So, uh, well, I've got to say, this period has been really, really good. If you haven't guessed already, the Top 10 that I'm doing today is my Top 10 Favourite Ciders. Um, but if you're not aware of the last um, top 10 videos that I did, I do it a little bit differently uh, from some other people because I don't do it like top 10 ciders like, of all time and stuff. I'm basically doing it um, from like period to period. So the last top 10 that I did was from reviews 1 to 150. So this top 10 favourite ciders list is from reviews 151 to 250. Because, yeah, I hit another milestone, 250 cider reviews. So every 100 reviews after this, I will be doing another top 10 um, favourite and least favourite ciders list. And, my God, when, whenever I um, hit a thousand cider reviews, which I probably will do at some point, then I will most likely do a top 10 ciders of all time. But for now, it is going to be top 10 favourite ciders list from reviews 151 to 250. And, uh, well, as I said, this period has been really, really good for ciders. In fact, um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time, because last time I showed you um, like little clips of the reviews and stuff, but I thought, well, actually, that's kind of given it away, and, you know, you don't really need to go and watch the reviews. So what I'm actually going to do is I've got my little list here, and I'm going to be um, putting links to each review after... Um, every every time that I mention what cider it is. So if you do want to have a more in-depth, um, more detailed description of why these ciders I think I feel are so good, then you can always uh, just click on the link and go straight to that review. So um, we'll see how this one pans out. But before we get on with the top 10 this time, I'm going to um, list a few honourable mentions. Uh, the ones that are still really bloody good ciders, but just didn't quite um, hit my list. I must say, this um, top 10 list was really, really hard to do, um, because I have had some some absolutely cracking ciders this time. I really have. But uh, the honourable mentions, in uh, no particular order, in fact, the first one is my most recent cider review, uh, the Barisi Atois Sidra Natural, which is literally the um, last review I just did. Uh, it's... The first, I would say the first proper traditional um, Spanish sidra that I have had, and it's a really, really good representation of um, what a sidra is supposed to be. I'm not entirely sure if it, if it is 100% um, natural, but even if it isn't, it was still an absolutely cracking um, sidra. So um, if you do see that about, then definitely check that out. Uh, the next honourable mention is Little Island Craft Cider. This is one that I um, got from Beers of Europe, and um, it's it was actually really bloody good. Um, I can't actually remember which um, where it actually came from. I think it was like Jersey, or it might have even been Irish, or something like that. Either way, it was definitely um, a proper cider. It was quite fresh. Um, and it, I, I just felt that it really did, like, cater for everybody, rather than, like, you know, oh, if you're a scrumpy drinker, you'll like this, or if you're a dry cider drinker, you'll like this. It was just a very nice, well-rounded cider, and one that, you know, everyone could really like. Uh, the next one is a little bit of a surprise. It's Chaplin and Cork's Somerset Reserve. Um, I believe these are the guys that um, kind of came from Gamers or Bulmers or somewhere like that, and they've gone and done their own thing, and they've kind of stuck two fingers up to these companies and said, look, this is how you actually do make cider. And the great thing is you can actually buy it off supermarket shelves as well for not too bad of a price. And uh, it's got a really, it's just lovely. It's um, almost got almost like a vintage, but it's not a vintage. They actually have just released uh, their own vintage. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, what that is like. And uh, the last honorable mention, I actually have a bottle of it in my fridge, well actually with me now. This little guy here, Orchard Pig Charmer. Um, out of the two, well, I've actually had all three Orchard Pig ciders now, but I've still got, around, got to get around to doing um, a review of the Truffler. Um, but the Charmer is probably my favourite of the three. It's just, it's lovely. It's really heavy in tannins. It's mellow. It's smooth. Um, it's just, it's just really easy to drink, and, you know, it's, it's just a lovely, lovely little drink. And again, you can get this off, um, supermarket shelves as well, so, I mean, what are you waiting for? Go out and, um, get a bottle of that for sure. Um, so, there you go, there are the honourable mentions, and I will say that, um, 
Well, we're starting... Well, there's no ciders on this top 10 list under 9 out of 10. So that just shows you how good these ciders have been so far. But for now, well, let's get this uh, top 10 rolling, shall we? Let's hit it. Okay, so starting off my top 10 list is um, another cider that I got from Beers of Europe when they were sending ciders over to me and then they kind of stopped doing it for whatever reason. Um, but it's one that I've, I've been wanting to try for a long, long time and that is Samuel Smith's Organic Cider. Um, now I know the Samuel Smith's company is more well known for making their um, beers and ales. Um, I think they actually do make a like a, a chocolate stout or something like that, which sounds absolutely lovely. But I know all their beers and their cider is 100% um, organic. And it was just, it, it was really fresh, um, like crisp, refreshing to the touch. I know that sounds uh, kind of generic and everything, but um, it was just really easy to drink. Um, and the bottle was kind of cool as well. I really do like, um, it, it was a proper like, organic bottle design as well. Um, but it's kind of, I think it is kind of rare to get around this area anyway. So um, if you do see it though, then definitely check out Samuel Smith's Organic Cider. That's made my top 10 list at number 10. At number 9, it's um, a company that I think made my last top 10 list as well. Um, and actually this time I had a choice between two of their ciders, but I decided to go for, um, well, number 9 is Sanford Orchard's Devon Scrumpy. Uh, I had a choice between this or, or uh, Sanford Orchard's Shaky Bridge, because, um, well, I forgot to actually say my stipulations are only one cider per company and um, no ciders... Uh, from like, you know, beer festivals or cider festivals because, you know, it's got to be ciders that you can like actually get readily rather than having to frequent. But yeah, the uh, number nine spot does go to Sanford Orchard's Devon Scrumpy and I decided to go for this because um, it just, it, it, it's just a really good scrumpy. It really is. I mean, the Shaky Bridge was awesome as well. That's why I gave it a nine out of ten too. But out of the two, I would probably pick uh, their Devon Scrumpy again over there. I mean, I probably could pick both if I had the choice. Um, but it, it's it's a really good representation of a Scrumpy. It's rustic. It's rough. Um, it's, it's one of those drinks that can put hairs on your chest. So let's just say that. Uh, so if you do get the chance, check out Sanford Orchard's Devon Scrumpy. That's made by number nine. <laughs> Um, right, my number eight, I ha I actually have with me, uh, here with, um, here with me tonight, and it's one that you most likely probably won't be able to get in this country at least, um, unless they can, like, actually break the UK, which I hope they do, and, um, if they do, I will be getting bottles and bottles of this because it's amazing. It is Bemble with Care's Apfel Schaumwein Barrique, um... Well, you'll be able to get a more in-depth um, review from the link, but I mean, just looking at the bottle, you can just see it looks absolutely amazing anyway. And it is, as the name suggests, it's more of a, an apple champagne, and it really was. It was like having apple apple flavoured champagne. It was just, it, it was light in texture, but the flavours and the complexity that was coming out of it was absolutely amazing. And uh, the barrique was their more... I guess they're drier, like, almost like more rougher version than their normal Apple Schaumwein, which again was an absolutely amazing um, drink. I think that just missed out on my last top 10 list as well. Um, but I mean, all, all of uh, Bemble with Care ciders are absolutely amazing. But as I said, one uh, cider per company. And uh, this one was definitely the one uh, that I had to pick. It was just amazing. And it has taken pride of place on my... Um, on my little drinks cabinet. So uh, yeah, if you do get the chance, and if they, if you do ever see it, then uh, yeah, definitely check out Bemble with Cares at Full Shout Vine Barrique. Um, just really, really good, and um, they, they just, they really need to become more widespread because they're amazing. <laughs> Uh, 
Anyway, um, rounding off the 9 out of 10s uh, for my number 7. That shows you the rest of them are all um, 9.5s. Uh, but rounding off my um, 9 out of 10s, coming in at number 7, is Sheppies. I love the Sheppies company. They do some really amazing, amazing ciders. And uh, the one that I've gone for is Sheppies Kingston Black. Uh, single variety. Um, not just because I love the uh, Kingston Black Apple and the Kingston Black Ciders, um, but I just feel that this is one of the better representations of this type of single variety cider. Because um, normally Kingston Black uh, Ciders are normally um, like, you know, bittersweet, dry, and you know, that's about it. But this one had a little bit more complexity behind it, but at the same time, it was still really, really easy to drink, despite I think it was like 7.2% ABV or something like that, which a proper cider should be. Um, but yeah, I, I had a couple more Sheppies uh, ciders as well during this period, but this one was easily the best one that I have um, had so far. Um, so yeah, well done Sheppies. Um, your Kingston Black has earned the number 7 spot on my top 10 favourite ciders list. So uh, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the number six spot, and this is where uh, we come to, well, the highest mark that I give, 9.5 out of 10, and the cider drinker seal of approval. Why don't I give a 10 out of 10? Well, because nothing's perfect. You know, because even though I've given it a 9.5 out of 10, someone out there won't like this drink. It's inevitable. You can't please everybody. But for me, these are my personal, like, absolute favourite ciders and ones that I recommend you go out and try. But anyway, coming in at number six, it's a cider that you can actually get at the supermarket. Funnily enough, oh well, you could do. And then bloody Sainsbury's got rid of it for whatever reason. You idiots, get it back in. Um, I'm talking about Douche de Longueville, Cidre Récoltant, which uh, is a bit of a mouthful, but you, you, I was able to get it for like two pound a bottle. And my God, it was one of the best two pounds I've ever spent on a cider in a shop. Just... It, it, I think it was just like a good, amazing representation of um, the like traditional Normandy style uh, cedars that you get in um, France. And you could get it here in the UK. And it was just, it was so different, but the complexity and the flavours behind it all were absolutely amazing. And as I said, you, can get, you could get it for £2 a bottle uh, from Sainsbury's. But then they, they, they just took it off the shelf, and I really don't know why. You, please, Sainsbury's, if you're watching this video, or anyone working in Sainsbury's, get them to get Douche de Longueville back in, because it's one of the best supermarket bought ciders I've ever had. Seriously, just please get it back in, that's all I say. So that is uh, my number six, Douche de Longueville Cidre Récoltant. <laughs> We're now in the number fives, we're now in the fifth place, and um, again this is probably one that you're not going to be able to um, get as readily as some of the other ciders on this list, but it still deserves this number five spot for sure. Um, it was given to me by um, a guy called Bobby Fisher, who is uh, an avid follower of me on YouTube, and he lives in Sweden, and um, basically this cider, well I've got it with me as well, because well, it's um, also on my drinks cabinet, because it was so, so good. And it's this bad boy right here. Number five spot goes to this uh, Skipaps. Well, I mean, just, it's that one. I can't pronounce it, unfortunately, but uh, that is what takes my number five spot. I think it's Skipaps Flas Flashast Halvtor. So it's uh, like a, their medium style, um, the medium style cider. But uh, it's got um, quite a lot of different apples in it. I mean, it's got Cox, Blenheim, Orange, Ingbo, Greensleeve, Santana, among others, and it was just amazing. It was just so, so good. Um, light, but flavoursome. Again, the complexity was all there, and, uh, well, it comes in those massive 750ml bottles as well, which is just, it's, it was just great. I just wanted to savour it for as long as I could, and I really, really did. Um, so, it, it just goes to show you that Sweden can make some really decent ciders, so don't believe that uh, the Recorder Leagues and the Copperbergs are the only thing that um, Sweden is good for, for cider, because, as this bad boy has shown, they can make really, really good drinks. So that's my number five, Skipaps Flashastor, however you pronounce it. 
I apologize to every single Swedish person watching this right now. Coming in at number four, we're back um, in the UK for this one, and um, it's not one that you can get in the supermarkets, but you can actually get it on most um, like side the shop websites, and um, it's it's a usually a frequenter of most um, beer and cider festivals, but you can actually buy it in bottles as well, and it is Crohn's user friendly. This is uh, the only Crohn's cider that I've had so far, but if this is what their other ciders are going to be like, if this is a good representation of their drinks, then I am going to be very, very excited to try the rest of them. Um, very, very different taste on the initial taste, if I remember correctly. It was just... It was just... It, again, it was just so different, but um, it was more on the... more on the, like, the dry, bitter, sweet side. Um, quite a high ABV, and it was... It was, it was just, yeah, it was just so different. Again, really, really complex flavours behind it. It's a real full body texture um, from what I can remember. And, um, and yeah, as I said, if this is what the rest of Crohn's ciders are going to be like, then they're going to be onto a good one. So uh, yeah, my number four spot goes to Crohn's user friendly. <laughs> So, the top three. Here we go. These are uh, coming up to the, the creme de la creme, as far as I'm concerned. And the number three spot goes to one of the more recent um, ciders that I tried. And it's, uh, well, if you've seen my recent cider reviews, you know that I've just subscribed to uh, a company called Orchard Box, which um, send eight ciders to you um, at a time for you to try. And they're normally ciders that you won't get anywhere else. And this is actually an Orchard Box exclusive. If you know, if you um, have had Orchard Box, you know which one I mean. The number three spot goes to Woodley Cider Orchard Box exclusive. Wow, this is what a cider is supposed to be like. Um, it's a scrumpy on steroids, basically. Uh, and strangely enough, the initial smell was almost off-putting, but I'm glad I stuck with it because it was easily like it was just wow. Punt, a real punch in the face. That I mean, I felt my hairs growing on my chest as I was drinking it. Uh, it's a real man's cider. Uh, it, 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 for, for some of the uninitiated, it might blow your heads off. It was um, just that that powerful of a taste. But for all the rest, it's just an, it's just an amazing, amazing drink. And uh, I just wish it came in a, in a bigger bottle because I just wanted it to last and last and last. So. Um, I mean, that's a really good reason to go out and get, you know, subscribe to Orchard Box just to get a hold of this drink because that's the only way you're going to get it. But I do highly recommend it. My number three spot goes to Woodley Cider Exclusive. So, which cider has just missed out on the uh, top spot? Well, this was very tough. It was very, very tough indeed. Um, but I, th I feel that th this is probably the right choice for this, but uh, this is not to say that this is um, a bad cider because obviously it's not. Uh, the number two spot goes to Dunkerton's Black Fox. Wow, what a drink. Um, I've had it before, but I didn't, I've never had the chance to get round to actually reviewing it. And then I saw um, a local Waitrose had it um, in, on their shop shelves and I thought I've got to do this and I've got to do a review. And I was just reminded of why it was such a good drink. Uh, the, the, just the flavours, the tastes, the textures, the complexity. Uh, it's, it's essentially all, pretty much almost the perfect cider as far as I'm concerned. And I, I love the Dunkerton's company anyway. I've had a lot of their drinks and every one of them has been absolutely top notch. Um, but it's just a shame that they're not as readily available around my area as I would like them to be. But, um, but yeah, I mean, s seriously, if you do see it, don't even hesitate. Get a bottle of Dunkerton's Black Fox. You won't be disappointed. It's just so, so good. If I, if, if I had to pick a cider that I could get constantly, then it would be this one, Dunkerton's Black Fox. In fact, any of the Dunkerton's range. I really do need to get around to reviewing more of their drinks because they're just an absolutely amazing company. And uh, they're actually, I would say, probably one of my favourite companies out there, along with um, Guatkin and Sheppies. They're just absolutely amazing company. Decent, really, really decent drinks. And uh, yeah, 
highly, highly worthy of taking my number two spot, Dunkerton's Black Fox. Go and get a bottle right now. Let cider be the spice of life! So, with all that hype um, surrounding Dunkerton's Black Fox, what could possibly have topped it um, for the number one spot? And um, it's probably going to be a bit of a surprise for you guys, because it's one that isn't really readily available, but I just feel it's worthy of hitting the top spot, because I actually think it's probably my new, like, favourite cider ever. Like, even beating um, Gwatkin Yarlington Mill, which was my favourite cider for a long, long, long time. Um, but this one just absolutely blew me away. And uh, once again, I've got it with me here. Again, it was sent um, fr um, from Bobby Fisher from Sweden. Uh, and again, it was, it was, it was just mind-blowing. It just shows you uh, that Sweden can do really, really good ciders. And it's, uh, and it's this little one here. The number one spot goes to Vandu Brinneries Tor Cider, their dry cider. Um, but it was like a little mini uh, corked cider here and it just it just looks the part doesn't it it just lo looks like it oozes class and um it it was it was basically Ben with cares at full Schaumwein barrique but I, you know I hate to say it but like a hundred times better not to say that Ben with care at Schaumwein barrique was bad because it really really wasn't I mean it made my top 10 favorite ciders lists um but I mean this one was something special it was just, it was just amazing. I just, it, I didn't want it to end. I, d I just s wanted to savour every single sip of it because it was just that damn good. It was just drinking, it, it was like drinking the finest champagne that you could buy. You know, like spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a, a champagne. But um, I got this sent to me for free and it was it, easily... Easily probably my, my newest favourite cider ever. Um, the only downside is, as I said, it, it probably won't, you probably won't be able to drink this, well, unless you like go over to Sweden and everything. But if you do see it, it it's, it's just an experience. It really, really is. Um, but as I said, this has taken pride of place on my uh, drinks cabinet because it, it just it just highly, highly deserves it. Um, so yeah, my number one spot easily goes to uh, Vando Brineries um, Tor Cider. And uh, I'll say this again, thank you so much Bobby Fisher for sending those um, ciders over to me because they're incredible. They are absolutely incredible. But um, as I said, for a cider that you can probably get more readily available then Dunkerton's Black Fox is an easy second place. Very, very easy second place. Um, so there we go. My top 10 favourite ciders list um, between reviews 151 to 250. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Bit, a couple of surprises, um, I must say, in this uh, list. But I said it was, it was really, really hard to come up with this one. Um, because all of these ciders and the honourable mentions, all the honourable mentions got 9s out of 10s as well. But uh, they just missed out on the uh, top 10. So it just goes to show you I had some really, really awesome ciders this time. But on the other side, I did have some really, really crap ones as well. So next time, join me when I will be doing my top 10 least favourite ciders of this period. And uh, yeah, well, they are pretty bad. There are real stinkers in there, for sure. But uh, yeah, hope you liked, hope you liked this one. And um, well, let me, know, let me know what you think. What are your favourite ciders that you've had... Um, so far, well, I would say last year and this year and everything, please let me know because uh, I'm always up for trying new and great tasting ciders. Uh, but until then, yeah, I will see you on the top 10 least favourite ciders. And I'm not looking forward to it. So uh, take care, guys. Until next time.